What's up, folks? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review a solo album by King Gordy, and that's The Great American Weed Smoker. Since this is the first time that I've reviewed um, King Gordy on his own, I reviewed a couple of his things with Bizarre. He has a group with him called The Last American Rock Stars, which he dropped a mixtape in 2017 and the album in 2018. But he's actually been here for quite some time. And further background about him... He, Eminem used to work with a group called the Bass Brothers, particularly on the Slim Shady LP and the Marshall Mathers LP. The Bass Brothers had a, a record label, and King Gordy was signed to it. And that's also where you can find Eminem's real first album, Infinite. But So King Gordy was in 8 Mile and stuff like that. I guess I remember that, but I don't because it was so long ago. But he dropped a debut album called The Entity, which had Eminem production, and he's been affiliated with Bizarre for a long time. And he has a group with with some of his pals called The Fat Killers. Now, they make one appearance on this album, and Bizarre makes two appearances. But this album is pretty much a hardcore rap album. And by that, I mean I don't surely know the amount of people who are going to be able to seek this album out on its own. I was kind of looking as to whether or not I could purchase this album in CD format, and it's not on Amazon. So right now you can only buy it in MP3 format unless you go to eBay or something. And uh, yeah, there was there were no singles released from this project, it doesn't look like, and I don't know if there were music videos released either. But I'll tell you, this is a real good smoking album. For fans of some of my older videos from 2015 and 2016 where I listed songs to smoke to, a lot of this project has to do with puffin' trees. And that just kind of happens to be the thing. I mean, Bizarre is a pretty good pot smoker also, and he's on two of the songs on here. The Fat Killers, they may be on a song, but they're not really on a smoking song. But a lot of this has a lot of soul, soulful feels. And it has a lot of airy and kind of just uh, atmospheric kind of sounds. It's not quite ethereal, but it is atmospheric like Bob Marley if he were to be alive like in the 2000s, something like that. And speaking of Bob Marley, one of his deceased buddies, Peter Tosh, is on the intro and the outro. Now, because some of that stuff is so old, I don't really feel inclined to detract it from his score, but I didn't really vibe with those intros and outros that much. I respect Peter Tosh, but I don't know why I didn't find that catchier than I did. But he's basically another ganja legend and that sort of thing, and respect to him, but... I don't know. So I'm not going to detract it from his score, but just know if you want that also, it's on this. It's on the intro and outro. So that leaves just 12 songs instead of 14 that are just uh, King Gordy. And um, so we'll cover some of them. Because I don't have any singles to cover, I'm just going to go through a few of these songs to kind of digest it for you and tell you what's up. So there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of soulful songs, songs like Hustler. Hustler, uh, My Love, and Mr. Ganja Man were some of my favorites in the terms of the soulful stuff. Headband was pretty good like that. And then Good Weed had a real good hook. I mean, King Gordy just kind of let loose on the hook on Good Weed. It's pretty infectious. I think you'll like it. This is overall energy on that song, plus bazaars on that song. And then Smoking Buddha kind of has like a rock kind of feel to it, and that's uh, pretty neat. It's like a real low-key smoking song there. I mean, it, it took me a while to finally hit me and make me realize that I like the song, but both the songs with Bizarre kick ass, and uh, the Great American Weed Smoker, the title track, is pretty good. It's pretty short. It's only a minute and 30 seconds, but I liked it. I like how the, it, there was like a bassoon in the song, some sort of wood instrument or something like that. And I like the way that that kind of went. It, it, I mean, I feel like Bizarre, or not Bizarre, but I feel like King Gordy has, like, the ability to, I feel like King Gordy has the ability to find what makes a smoking project. And it's not just the lyrics, it's not just the hooks, it's also the beats and the production and that sort of stuff. 
And that's part of it is just having the vibes like, are you going to be able to spark one up to this? Are you going to be able to light a cigarette before you spark one up to this? Are you going to be able to smoke with some females? Are you going to be able to smoke with some of your good friends? That sort of stuff. And he covers the bases. That's the thing. When he says great American weed smoker, and I didn't mention this before, but this project's going to get a high score because it's believable, smoke-worthy songs that incorporate the feeling of when you do have some recreational fun and it's also with insight when you actually are stoned that it works it's not something that makes you sober and ruins the mood um what's the term blows your high it doesn't do that so that's definitely good now there are some songs on here that are, are kind of faint traces of horror core songs like come out and play war of the worlds and high me sober me are kind of three that are like pseudo horror core pseudo har hardcore rap so that's if you like King Gordy when he's ferocious, he kind of is like that on those three songs. And then Fearless was not really a smoking song. And I don't know what direction that one was kind of heading in, but I didn't like that song. So that's just some stuff there. So yeah, once again, another favorite of mine is Good Weed, just to point that out. But all right. So out of 12 songs, not counting the Peter Tosh songs, I'm going to recommend to you the 12 songs that you should be listening to that I enjoyed. So they are uh, Good Weed, Come Out and Play, these are out of order, My Love, Mr. Ganja Man, Hustler, Headband, War of the Worlds, The Great American Weed Smoker, Smoking Buddha, and High Me slash Sober Me. All of these. I mean, they really kind of kick ass and stuff. Um, I feel like, you know, in order to score this project, I'm, I'm either going to give this a 9.5 or I'm going to give it a 10. I just have to think about that for a moment to kind of understand which I would rather give it. I mean, I feel like I could give it a 10, but it doesn't really have any singles. So I can't really give it a social score because there was not much promotion. You have to know about King Gordy in order to really know what's going on here i mean there's no guests there's no like bruno mars or nate dog or anything like that that could help bolster this project the closest big name person on here is just bizarre so it's basically a real exclusive kind of thing but so i can't score it socially because they didn't even try to promote it but i think i'll give this record a 10 because me liking 10 songs out of 12 the only two songs i didn't enjoy were just fearless and a teenage love so um, that's the whole project, you know, that's basically what it is. I suppose for me to talk about not really mentioning the Peter Tosh things, but I won't count that. So yeah, just a straight 10. The only problem with this project is I can't buy it in CD form right now. I don't know why it's not on Amazon, but hopefully uh, one day it will be because I would like to actually own this project. And I don't really like buying MP3s. I prefer, prefer to own the physical copy. So, um, yeah, it gets a 10, and I guess that's just as basic as it can be because there's no social score and there's no singles and stuff. So, um, yeah, there's no music video. So it's just a real kind of compact and just uh, low-key kind of project. So that's what to know. But, of course, with it having such a high score, that kind of lets you know that it's quality. And it's definitely quality um, blazing music to blaze.